My name is Joshua. I'll be your tour guide today. Before we get started, just a couple questions. Anyone here for the first time for a tour? Awesome, lots of first timers. Uh, anybody here from out of town? Cool. Who thinks they came the furthest uh, to us here in Milwaukee? Where are you guys from? California. California. Awesome. What, who else was from out of town? Where are you, where are you guys from? Dallas. Awesome. Where are you guys? Massachusetts. Massachusetts, awesome. Where are you guys? San Diego. San Diego, awesome. South Dakota. South Dakota. Where are you guys back from? Dallas. What's that? Dallas. Dallas, awesome. Dallas. 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 Well, welcome. Uh, we're going to get started with a video that shows Miller Corus as an innovator in the brewing industry for the past, present, and future. Uh, after that, I'm going to take you out to our facility, show you how we ship, brew, and pack all of our delicious beer. Our tour will end today in the historic Miller Caves, where you're going to meet a special guest to get rewarded with some ice cold samples of beer. There will also be uh, water, soda, and lemonade available for anyone not sampling today. The tour is four blocks long and includes both indoor and outdoor walking portions. There are 46 mandatory steps, 56 optional steps. It's also a photo-friendly tour, so feel free to take as many pictures as you would like. Uh, this includes my hair. Some people feel the need to do so. It's totally fine. Uh, just ask for no eating, drinking, or smoking along the tour route. Finally, we won't have access to a restroom for about an hour. So if you have to use the restroom, they are located uh, through these doors and to your right. So does anyone have any questions? All right, sit back, relax, and see you in about 12 minutes. sweet home for over a century. My arrival here coincided with the introduction of our oldest beer, Miller High Life, the champagne of bottled beer. No one knows for sure where that motto came from, but I suspect it may have something to do with New Year's Eve, since folks first tasted the High Life on December 30th, 1903. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My story begins over 100 years ago in the North Woods of Wisconsin. A Miller employee named A.C. Paul wandered lost in the woods, seeking a way out. Disoriented and tired, he lay down to rest. I came to him in a vision, in a dream. I sat in the moon as I do now and guided him towards safety by pointing the way. When he awoke, he followed my guidance and returned safely home. He was so grateful for my assistance that he repaid this deed by giving me a new home right here in Miller Valley. I became a permanent icon for the champagne of bottled beer, Miller High Life. My likeness is an even bigger mystery. Some say I'm Frederick Miller's granddaughter. Others say I'm fashioned after a figurine that was in the early Miller offices. Perhaps I'm the likeness of a colorfully costumed equestrian. Or I may be Diana the Huntress from Roman mythology, who used a crescent moon for her bow. While my origin remains a mystery, maybe Mr. Paul was right. Maybe I am just a dream. All I can say for sure is for me, this has been a dream come true. As the girl in the moon, I've long been part entertainer, part fantasy, and 100% mystery. But there is so much more to this story than just me. After all, the true history of Miller Valley precedes me by half a century. And it all started with a certain renowned German brewmaster. Take a look behind the curtain and you'll see what I mean. The Miller legend begins at this castle in Germany where the young brewmaster to the royal court had resolved to take his talents and special beer to the new world. It was 1854 when Frederick J. Miller set sail for America, bound for a future that even he could not have imagined. He brought with him his skill, his ambition, and in his pocket, his own special strain of yeast. A centuries-old secret that remains carefully guarded to this day, having been handed down from generation to generation. After a full year of searching his vast new country for the perfect location, Fred Miller found exactly what he was looking for right here in Milwaukee. Fine hops and barley, skilled craftsmen, 
and an abundance of pure, fresh water. He also found plenty of thirsty customers. So in 1855, Frederick Miller bought the Plank Road Brewery, complete with its underground caves in what would become Miller Valley. During his first year in business, he produced 300 barrels of his great beer. But it was more than just outstanding beer that set Frederick Miller apart from his peers. It was also his popular beer garden, the place where Miller time was born. In those days, Milwaukee wasn't the only Midwestern town where beer was brewed, but it suddenly became a much more important brewing center in 1871, following the Great Chicago Fire. Milwaukee rose to the occasion, sending relief, comfort, and beer to help Chicago through its disaster. By the 1880s, Frederick's growing brewery was rolling out nearly 80,000 barrels a year. Business was booming, and in 1886, Miller opened a brand new brew house, the same historic brew house you'll be walking past today here in Miller Valley. His place in brewing history was secure, his legacy profound, and in 1888, Frederick J. Miller passed away at the age of 63. Upon his famous father's death, Ernest Miller took the brewery helm, and remarkable progress continued. In 1903, even before Henry Ford had one for cars, Miller launched its own assembly line for bottles right here in Miller Valley. That same year, the company's premium beer became known as Miller High Life. By 1918, production had reached half a million barrels, but the next year, progress came to a sudden stop with the advent of prohibition. Most beer companies just disappeared, but the Miller family continued to innovate, introducing non-alcoholic beverages like lemon soda and malt syrup. And sure enough, when prohibition was repealed in 1933, Miller quickly became more a part of the American scene than ever before. By the mid 20th century, the brewery was experiencing tremendous growth, fueled by the vision of our founder's grandson, Frederick C. Miller, the first company president to embrace the potential of a brand new advertising medium, television. The brand continued to grow, and in 1969, Miller was sold to Philip Morris. Soon, Miller created what is today the industry's biggest category, low-calorie beer. The year was 1973. The brand was Miller Lite, the most popular new beer of all time. Like beer from Miller, everything you always wanted in a beer. Miller Lite proved to Americans that they didn't have to sacrifice taste for fewer calories. It also brought a healthy dose of fun to the industry. Today, Miller Lite remains what it's always been, one of the best tasting and biggest selling light beers in America. And now, another beer that meets the same description, Coors Light, is part of our historic Milwaukee family. That's because in 2008, Miller and Coors formed a joint venture, combining two legendary American breweries, creating an efficient company that benefits from shared brewing talent, distribution, and marketing strength. With the creation of Miller Coors, we've merged the Rocky Mountains with the Great Lakes, two of the best places on the planet to brew beer. In 2010, Miller Coors tapped into the best brewing talent from both of these places to better serve its growing craft and import markets. The result, 10th and Blake Beer Company, named for the streets where many of its craft beers are produced in Milwaukee and Denver. Tenth and Blake brings added focus to leading craft beers such as Leidenkugels and Blue Moon, and to award-winning imports like Pilsner or Quell, Peroni, and Grolsch. But it's not just great beer that distinguishes Miller Coors. It's also the way we run our business. We are proud to foster an environment of diversity and inclusion, not just among our employees, but also the many local companies we do business with. At Miller Coors, we know that with great beer, comes great responsibility. This applies not only to responsible consumption, but to our environment and local communities as well. <coughs> Community involvement is a big part of our rich heritage, a standard set by our founder back in 1855. 
We believe it's our responsibility and privilege to not only brew the best beer, but to be the best neighbor. That's why we are so involved in our community in giving back to the people who support us. Each year, we contribute millions of dollars to local charities and thousands of volunteer hours to community service. Miller Coors is proud to be a leading supporter of the United Way in Milwaukee. We also provide major support for Milwaukee's United Performing Arts Fund, for the famous Milwaukee Zoo, and for improvements to Bradford Beach along our beautiful Lake Michigan shoreline. We've proudly partnered with Discovery World to create the Miller Coors Thirst Water Innovation Lab in downtown Milwaukee. Speaking of water, we're doing our very best to conserve as much of this precious resource as we possibly can. We operate some of the most water efficient breweries in the world, and we continue to make great strides in successfully brewing more beer with less water. We work closely with the farmers who supply our barley and hops to help reduce the amount of water they use on their crops. Never has our commitment to the environment been stronger than it is today. And that's reflected in everything we do, even here at the Visitor Center. In fact, the Miller Brewery Tour is state certified as a travel green Wisconsin tourism destination. At Miller Coors, we take alcohol responsibility very seriously. We work diligently to help prevent underage drinking and to promote responsible enjoyment of our beers. We've invested heavily in programs that combat drunk driving, like those that provide free rides and cab vouchers across the country to help people get home safely. As you can see, we are passionate about our work, our beer, and our community. Here in Wisconsin, Miller Coors and its distributors employ more than 3,000 people. Miller Coors is proud to be the major beer sponsor for the Green Bay Packers, the Milwaukee Brewers, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Wisconsin State Fair, and Summerfest, the world's largest music festival. Our brewery is a vital part of Milwaukee and has been for more than a century and a half. We are proud of our community and determined to keep our founders' commitment alive. They say Frederick Miller's desire was to be more than a great brewer, leader, and innovator. They say what he really wanted was to make the whole world feel like his personal guest. What they say is true, so go ahead and make yourself at home. Because today, you are Frederick Miller's personal guest. And mine. Now that you know Frederick's legend, think of me as the living legend of Miller Valley. I'm here to offer you a toast. Because that's what makes you shine. And when you shine, I shine.